You might be interested, Bill, that one of the people who used this claim, I won't say argument, this claim very, very frequently throughout the 1970s uh, and into the 80s was Andrew Theophanes, who was a mm. Labor member of the Federal Parliament. Mm. Andrew has just spent time in jail <coughs> because uh, when he left the Parliament he was working as a, an immigration agent and he was saying that he would ease the way of women coming into Australia provided they came across with certain sexual favours. So <coughs> that was the, he was the one who said, you know, we were, we were racist. Uh, uh -huh. so, uh, an interesting bit of background history. Yeah. With the Catholic Church's opposition to contraception, would you like to comment on the fact that Italy, it seems, has the world's lowest uh, birth rate? Now, clearly, the Catholic Church has been a terrible failure in Italy and in Spain. Uh, and as I said, I think many Catholics in those countries do not understand this theological finding. Uh, and so they're doing what they see as being in their own self-interest. I also think that uh, when people claim that uh, Western civilization will disappear because of below replacement level fertility, uh, that one has to stand back and say, well, how was Italy before its population grew to its current level? Uh, and I can't tell you the population of Italy during the Renaissance, but it was a lot smaller than what it is now. And they produced some pretty good stuff. I just walked around Rome last year and I was pretty impressed. Um, the United States at the time of our independence from Britain was a population of four million people. And they produced some pretty good thinkers. And there's, while quality of life was different from what it is today. Uh, the quality of life of that country with all the resources at its disposal then was immense and people saw it as a huge opportunity. And if we were to go back to having four million people, which isn't gonna happen anytime soon, uh, it doesn't mean that the civilization would disappear. It would just mean that the resources per capita would be a whole lot greater. So, uh, I think that answering these charges with facts about, uh, and, and the point you started with, uh, Italy's very low birth rate, uh, there are reasons why Italian couples are choosing to have one child. Life in Italy is very expensive. It's a very crowded society. Uh, people have things they want to do, like going to work and raising children is much lower on the agenda than it was a long time ago. But it doesn't mean Italy is going to disappear. And at some point, if Italy were to fall to a, a much smaller population, I suspect the fertility rate would go up uh, in response to the greater resources that people had available to them. So I don't think that we're going to see whole countries and whole cultures and whole societies going extinct just because in 2009 they have below replacement level fertility. Vienna at the time of Mozart and Beethoven was smaller than Adelaide, <coughs> so uh, it's worth remembering. Just one other question. Uh, Get you, you've had a question here. Yeah. Um, seems to me the key to all of this is the way that our economic, economic system works, and it plainly is not working. Um, I mean, it works as it does, but. Um, when are we going to evolve uh, an economic system where people matter and uh, the environment matters and everything else matters? There's been various goes of it over the, over the years. Mm -hmm. We seem to be just chugging along with the same old thing. Um, we need some really left brain, right brain, new dimensions. We do. A lot of thought is going into this and indeed the current downturn is probably a boon to the thought because people are realizing that we have a system that's not sustainable and they're opening their mind, steady state economies, that uh, you know, ultimately will have to come into, for into force because you can't have an economy that continues to grow in terms of use of either renewable or non-renewable resources indefinitely. Um, and so ultimately we're gonna have to find a way to live it, that's in balance with the environment. That's, that's exactly the question. We, we are 
we are a, a steady, that we are a living with it, a, a, a steady growth. Now, eventually, it will keep, it will, it will bend over and and, uh, and go down again. But how how do we arrive at the at the uh, the uh, bending over moment and and how how deep and how high does the bending over go? Now, uh, I would I would like to come to, uh, to uh, uh, an earlier bending over to 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 uh, to zero or to uh, ne neg negative cross cross mm -hmm. How how can you can you make it so so uh, important to uh, to uh, 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 the the government to to see? that they went bend over and, and bend over earlier. I'm not an optimist on this issue. I think it's going to be very difficult to change the politics of the world. Uh, nevertheless, there is a lot of good thought going into this. The Center for the Advancement of the Steady State Economy, uh, which has an interesting website and a lot of thought that they've put into how do we get there, uh, is one example. There, There is some good thinking going on, and I do think uh, a crisis like the one we're in economically will help to get some politicians to open their minds, but I'm not an optimist that they'll do that in time. Could I, could I just say that uh, those of you who are not familiar with the work of Herman Daly should go and read Herman Daly, and particularly his, his recent essays where he's actually uh, addressing this issue uh, very directly. But, but I, we're going to have a cup of tea now, a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and a biggie. So, um, any of you who want to you know, stay and have a cup of tea and buttonhole Bill for further questions, but I just want to say, Bill, thank you very, very much for um, not unsurprisingly, uh, you know, the brilliant talk that you gave oh. last year, a similarly brilliant talk, and as uh, Catherine said, very, very uh, enthusiastic and very positive, and it's terrific to, to know that uh, the work you're doing. Thank you very much.